G'day, welcome to Down the Woodworks and to the second and last video of the coffee table build. The timber for the legs is this old rough sawn hardwood that's already cut square and is surprisingly very flat and straight. However, there's quite a bit of colour variance in these pieces, so I gave them all a very light pass over the jointer on one side to reveal their colour. And you can see that colour difference here. I wanted timber that was the closest match to the top, and those two pieces on the right were, well, just right. Then it was onto the jointer once again to flatten one face and reveal the hidden beauty in these pieces. I then used that flat face against the fence to flatten one adjacent face perpendicular to the first. With two flat sides I could now run them through the thickness planer and mill the other two faces to bring the legs down to final dimension, which was about 65mm square. Next I trimmed the ends off and cut them the final length. Each piece was long enough for two legs. I then took off all the sharp edges with a 45 degree chamfer bit in the router table. Each leg was now going to have a single mortise cut into it so that they could be joined together with a short apron piece. I removed the bulk of the material at the drill press with a brad point drill bit and then cleaned out the mortises using my router with the mortising jig attached. Unfortunately I didn't video that bit, but it was the exact same process I used here when I cut the mortises in the tabletop pieces for the floating tenons. The short apron pieces were made from a couple of spare lengths of board left over from the tabletop build. These needed to have a tenon cut on each end. With the blade on the table saw set to the required height, I made an initial shoulder cut on all four sides of the apron and then removed the rest of the material by making multiple passes over the blade. It was much easier to round off the tenons than it would have been to square off the mortises in the legs. Nice fit. Then it was just a matter of gluing up the two leg assemblies. The original idea with this table was to make this kind of subframe to join the two leg assemblies together and support the tabletop, giving it like a floating look. The frame was a pretty straightforward build, just glued and screwed together. I then painted it black in an attempt to make the frame somewhat unseen or less obvious. To join the subframe to the leg assemblies with screws, I first drilled some shallow holes in the side aprons for the screw heads with a brad point bit so I could later plug them with dowels. I then drilled all the way through the apron with a smaller drill bit centered in those larger holes. 
I didn't show it here, but I drilled pilot holes in the ends of the subframe to allow the screws to be driven in. The frame is made of hardwood, and without pilot holes, you run the risk of snapping screws, splitting the wood, or stripping the screw heads. With all the screws in place, I plugged the holes with some dowel and sanded them flat after cutting them off. So I've got the top just sitting on the base now. I wanted to have a quick look at uh, what I thought. It's just sitting on there, it's not fixed at the moment. And looking at that timber, that's absolutely beautiful. You can just imagine how good it's gonna look with a finish on it. But as far as the design of the whole table goes and the floating effect I was going for, I have to be honest, I hate it. I know it's harsh, but that's the truth. It just didn't turn out the way I uh, wanted it to. If we come over and have a look at it from the end profile, I don't know, it just, it just doesn't look right to me. So what to do with this base? I do want to be able to salvage as much of this timber as I can that I've already got here because it is beautiful timber and I don't have that much of it. So it may sound crazy or it may sound very simple but I came up with an idea of just tipping that upside down. Those two center rails there that you can see now, they're gonna be cut out and going to be replaced with some more of that beautiful Australian hardwood. So those two are gonna go in place of that. And uh, yeah, I think that's gonna look a lot better. You'll have to trust me on that. The problem I had now though, was I had to drill out those dowel plugs very accurately so I could reuse the holes. I drilled a hole in a piece of offcut using the same drill bit to drill out the dowels and use it as a guide which worked perfectly. After cutting the frame out I used a chisel to gently pry apart those glue joints which actually turned out easier and cleaner than I anticipated. The new stretches are thicker than the old subframe timbers, so any marks will be covered over. And like the rest of the base, I removed the sharp corners on the stretches with a 45 degree chamfer bit. I use the same size clearance hole drill bit to mark the screw hole locations on the end of the stretches and then drill the pilot holes for the screws. To fix the top to the legs, I made these screw plates by cutting up some heavy duty angle brackets. I made sure to keep one of the original holes when cutting these to length, just to save me a little bit of drilling time. Brackets were going to be recessed flush into the top of each leg and facing in towards the centre of the table. I used my trim router to cut the recesses freehand. I set the depth of the bit the same as the thickness of the bracket and just took my time to cut as close to the line as possible. The tip with this is to use a small diameter bit which gives you more control. Then I just cleaned up the edges with a chisel.
This old timber had a bit of open grain, but nothing that really required filling. So what I did was I brushed on a generous coat of marine varnish to get into that grain. And then when it was dry, I sanded it back smooth. And then rubbed it down with some terps on a rag. The idea behind the terps was that it would slightly dissolve just the top layer of the leftover varnish to leave it even smoother. And it seemed to work out quite well. Then the whole tabletop got a few coats of sprayed on clear polyurethane. This is always the most satisfying part of a build, I think. Once it was all dry, the base was screwed to the top and the table was finished. Well, that's it. Uh, I think in the end, the table worked out pretty good. Uh, there was a bit of a hiccup along the way. I must admit, I almost shelved this project and just started on something new because um, I was really bummed about the design just not working out the way I wanted it to or way it was, um, I pictured it in my mind. But I have to go back to a recent video I was watching around about the same time. It was um, the Samurai Carpenter was interviewing uh, Tom LaFortune. He's a carver, totem pole carver. And something that he said that really stuck in my mind and um, his comment was, as woodworkers, we don't make mistakes, we make modifications. And I think that's what sort of kicked me in the ass and said, you know, you can fix this, just think of something else. And um, I'm so glad that I did because, yeah, as you see, the project, I think it worked out actually better in the end. I'm really happy with it. If it's your first time here to the channel, then a huge welcome. And if not, always, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch along. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. That way you don't miss out on any future videos. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. It does help. Uh, share it around, go back and have a look at some of my other videos, but in the meantime, you guys all have a great day.